It's been a year since the Galvan Valley clash with the Chinese troops. After rounds of deliberations, how much disengagement have we seen in the Eastern Ladakh? What is your assessment of the situation on the ground zero? The situation continues to be one of stalemate. Uh, fortunately, uh, after Galwan, uh, there has been no escalation. And uh, yeah. there has been, uh, that's a very positive side. Let me give the politics first. There is no escalation. Uh, though the ex expected uh, disengagement did not take place in all areas, it took place in the most sensitive area of Pengongso, which was very sensitive. And uh, good that it happened uh, uh, when it happened uh, after the court commander's round of talks. Uh, but there are other areas uh, where uh, the complete uh, forward deployment of the PLA, uh, which they did in the, in the month of May, uh, May June last year, uh, they have not really gone back from there. Uh, but then uh, uh, the court order level talks are on, the diplomatic level talks are on. Uh, we had the political talks between the Raksha Mantri and the defense uh, uh, chief, uh, and also the uh, our EAM and their foreign ministry in uh, Moscow last year. So things are uh, looking up. Uh, the only thing I would like to bring out, out here is uh, we have to understand the dynamics of the line of action control. Uh, China definitely uh, they achieved strategic uh, surprise by uh, doing what they did last year in the month of May June, uh, and uh, there were divergences like Nakula and Sikkim. I've been the co-commander there. Uh, Eastern Ladakh I know well, so the, their primary aim was in Eastern Ladakh, and uh, they did this forward deployment. Uh, but our reaction, uh, we surprised them by our reaction. Uh, which was, you know, a very measured reaction. Uh, we had an equitable and proportional deployment. We called it strategy of uh, what I keep uh, repeating myself as no blinking, no brinkmanship. So we did not blink and we did not carry in brinkmanship. And uh, initially the things were looking bad, but uh, 30th of August when we occupied the Kalash range, so it uh, gave a signal of our intent uh, to them that we are here to stay. Uh, it is one year to Galwan now. Uh, I would like to take few minutes on Galwan. Uh, I, I do feel that Galwan uh, was a, a, a deliberate ambush laid by the PL. They knew that our troops will come there to recheck uh, as per the uh, uh, quarter decision was taken at the court commander's flag meeting and they were prepared to ambush our people who had gone there just to recheck whether the PLA returned to the original positions or not. And that was the 15th of uh, June in the evening. And when they reached out there, the PLA sprung a surprise ambush on our, on our men, Uncle Santosh Babu and his party. But what really happened was that uh, our uh, men under Uncle Santosh Babu had soft to salute them and uh, salute all the 20 martyrs in one year. Uh, they gave a very resolute response and retaliated very well. Now, there are a lot of questions being asked as to why did they not fire, why are they carrying weapons. Let me now take a minute out there. They could not have fired. The reason is it's a very constricted space. It's on a ledge. And when you are in contact with each other, how do you give orders to fire? Because you'll injure your own men. You know, and we never ever fire at our own men. So we have to understand that. But their response was so good that what they did was a tactical action, but it had strategic implications. Uh, because of Colonel Santosh Babu and his men, many more Gulwans which were planned by the PLA, I'm certain about it, did not take this. They realized that the advance are not going to work in their favor and the Indian army will respond and retaliate in not proportional or out of proportional terms. So that resolve which they did, the fight which they gave, the retaliation which they did, they it shook up the PLA and the many more Galwans which are waiting to happen because it can't, it can't be that there are only one place where they have planned this. They would have planned it in multiple places and that's the PLA style. But once they realized that the Indian army is going to give them back in the same coin or much more, they did not escalate to other areas, neither horizontally or vertically in, in weapons also. So that is where I say that Kansantosh Babu and Talwan was a turning point. And after the 16th of June, if you see, and uh, most of the people may not agree with me, but we have had peace and tranquility, though very fragile, but there is a little peace along the line of action. Sir, all along India has reiterated that it has had an upper hand in the negotiation. Yet we see the Chinese belligerents coming in the way of disengagement. After witnessing some disengagement from Pangong to India, why have the China Chinese not moved forward on vacating from other friction points? Uh, they have not moved forward as yet. So negotiations are on. Uh, we also need to understand the Chinese way of functioning. They have come with the intent. And uh, they have uh, been surprised by uh, with the miscalculation. So they would like to 
Next week, they also have a domestic audience. They also have an army. So they will they will like to take back uh, you know a face saving effort as I say. You know Chinese Chinese believe in face saving. So they are waiting for a face saving effort. And it has been one year. Uh, Some Drongchu, uh, you know the face off at uh, stand off at Some Drongchu lasted six and a half years. So we are still in the in the negotiation process. Not that the Chinese have come and occupied it. They're not going to go back. We'll have to keep pressurizing them. We'll have to keep putting pressures on them, and the many ways are doing it on the ground, and in many in many other domains. You know, these are these are not only one domain. They're multi, this multi-dimensional, they're multi domains, and we'll have to synergize all our efforts at the political level, at the diplomatic level, especially at the military level. Because the military is not strong, then the the uh, the diplomacy doesn't work. Okay. The diplomacy only work if you are strong on the ground, and you stand firm on the ground. That is how the diplomacy works. So we have a resilient, uh, we have a very combat-hardened, uh, uh, battle-hardened combat which uh, army and armed forces who have done very well in these altitudes. And I think Chinese have realized that, and they are paying the cost for this in terms of deployment. Uh, Chinese are a conscript army; they do not have the exp- expertise and the experience, so they are facing the cost. If you see the turnover is taking place much faster than what we, we do in two years, they are doing every six months turnover. So sustaining for them will be very difficult. India and China have signed five agreements to address border disputes. And confidence-building measures between 1993 and 2013. How do you view Beijing's mindset and action to dilute these treaties? The five agreements uh, were the basis of the peace and tranquility and the equilibrium, which uh, you know at, at our land action control. We got a three, four, eight, eight kilometer long India-China uh, boundary or Indo-Tibetan boundary, as I say. Uh, but these five agreements stood the test of time, and uh, they were—I uh, uh, I, I wouldn't say that they, they were con. Building measures, it was going very well to to 2020. We had certain exceptions in 2013 in Devsang. I was a DGMO that time. Then in Chumar in September of 2014. So there, there were issues. But even when the peace and peace and tranquility was there with the agreements, and these agreements are very good agreements. The China has violated the agreements. You know, China uh, is using its sharp power. Uh, if you do not agree with China, that means you are disagreeing with them. There is difference between not agreeing and disagreeing. Yeah. So China, China is using its sharp power. China is not taking no for an answer. It is either China's way or no way. So that is what yeah. China's philosophy of sharp, you know, a sharp power is. It's a dictatorial, uh, dictatorial regime. It's not a democracy like ours, where there are many voices. Every once we get it. So we have to understand what China does, and it's a very, it's a uh, manifestation of their, uh, uh, you know, sharp power. Not only along the line of action control, but if you see, this is uh, evident in uh, South China Sea and East Sea. Uh, evident against uh, Japan, Malaysia, Indonesia, Taiwan, Korea. You you name it, it is it's all Philippines. Yes. So it is uh, it's a part of a larger strategy. So uh, to that extent, I think, I think we have done uh, reasonably well, and uh, we'll have to see what China does here on, and uh, we'll have to keep uh, being strong on the ground in all domains and uh, keep partners on. It is in our interest that five agreements are there. We reinforce the agreements. The last one was. Uh, in October of 2013, the Border Defence Cooperation uh, Agreement, the DGM was signed. So we had worked at it, and I think it was a good agreement. It also spoke about uh, the hotlines which came within uh, the two regions, most like we have with Pakistan. Uh, it has not happened as a separate issue altogether. Uh, but we'll have to build capabilities, we'll have to enhance capacities, and we have to keep demonstrating a resolve to China because that is what the China China understands. It respects strength, and we have to be strong and demonstrate our strengths. Sir, in the past too. The Chinese troops used to come in the Ladakh for exercise and training, and return once it get completed. Why did they choose to stay back last year? That is a key question actually, because uh, uh, you know what they've been doing is they've been coming year on year, and every every month we we do that. We we do our uh, you know uh, exercises during summer months, and uh, that's the season. We have to understand that China has built a very excellent infrastructure on its side. It's a uh, Multi-dimensional, multi-model infrastructure. It's air. It is uh, expressways. Uh, it is infrastructure for logistics. It is infrastructure for housing troops, and uh, they have excellent infrastructure, in, including up- upgradation of the airfields. Uh, so earlier they used to have two season capabilities. That means they would build on one season, and if they want to do something the next season, so we had that time. Now because of the infrastructure they have got, it is a one season capability. So they used to come every year, and they used to go back after about uh, two months or so. And uh, but this time they came in as usual, and that is where I say we they achieved strategic surprise, and they did not go back. They started forward forward deployment. So there was a there was an intent to it, but that intent I I don't uh, I think many will disagree with me, but I I also disagree. It is not because of the 
the DBO show road, which you often talk about, that road was in the making since 2000, 19 years in the making. If they had to do something on that road, they have done it before it was constructed, not after it was constructed. Right? Yeah. I, I don't think they are there for uh, only territorial Islamicizing, as we call it. They are there, like I said, they 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 don't. Uh, if you don't agree with them, they disagree. No, they have strategic anxieties. China strategic anxieties. They have strategic concerns in the Indian Ocean region. 80% of the oil goes to the Indian Ocean region. We dominate that. We are the only nation to have opposed the BRI. We are the only nation to oppose the China Pakistan Economic Corridor, which is central to the to the you know China dream of BRI. So we have to understand that. I think the game is much bigger, the picture is much bigger. We have to understand the, we do understand the big picture. It's not that we don't understand. We do understand the big picture and we'll have to play it accordingly. We'll have to build capability in the Indian Ocean region, uh, not to threaten, uh, but as a deterrence. You know, you dominate and better yes. than the Indian Ocean region. We can't just be doing it on the LSE alone. Because LSE, he has certain advantages and infrastructure. We are doing it, but it's too little too late. And as long as we have and but we uh, we have a you know that advantage of his infrastructure. We meet and mitigate it by our resolute response and our combat pitch experience out there in high altitudes, whether it is along the LAC, Siachen, Kargil, draw sites. You, we've been there for decades. So that is something which we have on the plus side. So we'll have to look at all angles, be it political, military, diplomatic, informational, economic, cultural, and see how to deter China's aggressiveness.